everybody. We're here at ASCO 2018. I'm Shannon Weston, Associate Professor at MD Anderson Cancer Center, and I'm here with Daniel Markle, Dr. Daniel Markle, who's a graduating medical student from Northwestern University, and he is going to be, or has presented some amazing research. So we're going to get down and dirty and talk about it a little bit. Okay, welcome. Thank you. So first, can you tell me a little bit, I know, you know, minimally invasive surgery reduces morbidity. We've seen that over and over again across a number of different cancer types. But right. can you tell us a little bit about what your study showed um, for minimally invasive surgery in um, stage 1B1 uh, cervical cancer? Sure. Yeah, so uh, we showed a lot of the same results again, uh, showing that, uh, you know, morbidity and, and actual costs were reduced with minimally invasive surgery. So financial costs? Right, financial okay. costs. Um, however, the, the main results from our study was that minimally invasive surgery was associated with worse overall survival for stage 1B1 cervical cancer. And uh, the key aspect of this for our study was that this uh, survival difference was only significant for tumors between two and four centimeters in uh, size. However, for tumors less than two centimeters in diameter, uh, there was no statistically significant difference uh, in overall survival. Interesting. So it's a little different from some of the data that we saw presented at the last SGO Absolutely. annual meeting where all comers, they looked at all sizes and they demonstrated a decreased survival in those patients that were treated with radical history, hysterectomy by minimally invasive technique. Correct. So f to, to make sure I hear you right. So so for tumors more than two centimeters is really where you saw yes. that survival difference. Absolutely. Interesting. And did those studies, do you know offhand, did those studies look, tease that out by size at all? Sure. Or? You know, to my knowledge, they did not. Okay. Um, I know that uh, the laparoscopic approach to cervical cancer trial, uh, there were some key differences between that study and ours. Mm -hmm. um, first, they, uh, that was an international trial, ours was, you know, uh, uh, from pa with included only patients in the United States. Got it. Meaning their trial was 80% laparoscopic, ours was 80% robotic. Uh, additionally, we included some different stages. So they had uh, 1A1 with uh, lymphovascular space invasion, okay. 1A2 and 1B1, and we specifically focused on 1B1. Uh, and I think that really allowed us to actually see this difference. Gotcha. Uh, and same with the other the other study presented at SGO, they included uh, 1A2 and 1B1. That's Dr. Um, Rao Hain's that, yeah, study? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. Dr. Rao Hain's study. And he also, uh, in that study only, he had one less year than us. So I think okay. actually that additional year pr probably is what allowed us to look specifically at size so okay. that we could have enough patient numbers. Interesting. So given these results, mm -hmm. both the results that were presented at the two abstracts at SGO and now your abstract, are we changing practice here for early stage cervical cancer? I think absolutely, and particularly for that two to four centimeter group. I, th I really don't think uh, physicians should be doing minimally invasive surgery at this point. Mm -hmm. For under two centimeters, you know, given that our study is retrospective, you know, there are some caveats, but I do think uh, for tumors under two centimeters, it can be kind of a, a discussion with a patient. Okay, well that's really important that you've teased out that time, because I know one of the things that was heartbreaking to us was the fertility sparing patients. Like, can we you know, do these trachelectomies? Right. Can we do these minimally invasive or do we have to do open trachelectomies? So certainly this, these are the kind of data that we want to see so we can really start to use that precision medicine to help guide the, the surgery we choose for our patients. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much for being thanks. with me. And you all, thanks for uh, checking us out. Thank you.